All right. So I can leave everybody um, unmuted. So if you have any questions, and uh, so, so I want, and if you guys are talking, I will mute you. So, all right. So there is a lot to go through today, but I really appreciate you all coming on. And um, for those that registered, I sent you a 30 page document about everything that we're gonna be talking about here. So the first thing I want to do is um, we're just going to go over just a little bit of object objectives today. I went ahead. I actually didn't ask you what iPhone you're using. Pretty much um, all the iPhones, like from the seven and up, okay. Regardless if you have um, the extra zoom filters and things like that, everything that I'm showing you today is can relate to all of the phones. Okay, so we're going to go over a quick little iPhone camera shortcut. We'll have to access camera setting. We're going to, I'm going to show you a, a site called iPhone Photography School. That's going to be like a 15, 13 minute video and they're going to go basically over um, the basics of like composing a picture. So this way before you even uh, take your picture or you, you have the best picture possible and then you go and edit, okay? All right, our, you know, our goal when you're taking photos is not to just take a picture and edit, you know, like what they do in the movies, you know, you know you'll fix all the, you'll fix everything in post editing. So this, um, this little video tells about some little, some little tips and tools and how you can go ahead and take some really good photos. Then I'll go through on how to edit photos on the iPhone. There's a lot of different um, settings and controls that you can do right there without using an app. Then I'm gonna show you a uh, free editing, two free editing apps, Snapseed and VSCO, okay? So it's gonna be a lot of information. So again, this is from, this is, uh, this is the various buttons and ports. The main thing is that as everybody knows where your camera is and what it is on the back, okay? And then this is this is the iPhone 11. So you have three different camera lenses. That's mine. Okay. And then mine only has, yeah, so mine only has a couple, you know, has one lens. So just know where your camera lens is. So the shortcut. Okay, so how many of you, when you have your phone in hand and you want to take a picture and you can't find your camera icon, it's lost on your phone, correct? How many of you? No. So you know, like when you have to go ahead and you want to take a picture, you click on your home screen and then you all of a sudden you have to like find, you have to scroll and find your camera app. But what I'm gonna show you right now is how you do. All right, I'm gonna share you my phone. For the camera. Okay. I'm gonna show you my phone. Hopefully, sometimes this. <laughs> Good thing they don't hear us. They can hear you. Yes, we do. Yep. Oh, you do? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, so on everybody with me. Okay, so everybody with their iPhones. So you're on the home, you're on this screen. And now how many people have like a messy and you want to take a picture and you cannot find your photography, the picture of the camera. What I want you to do basically is just swipe up. So you see this on your phone. Do that now with me. Okay, swipe from the bottom up. And then you're going to see a picture, an icon of your camera and touch and touch that. And there's your camera. Okay. Can everybody, has everybody done it? So you have your home screen rather than trying to figure out where it is. You just swipe up and then you'll look. Mammy, yes. that's an older phone. The new ones you come down from the top. Okay. The top right, you come down. Okay. And some people actually, you can swipe to the left and get your phone. So depending on what phone you have. Okay. So, 
Everybody understand that quick little, mm -hmm. that quick little. Oh, wait, it's on the bottom. Jen, we didn't go up high enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. That's a good tip, Tammy. That's a great tip. Okay, so that's high. just yes. a quick uh, shortcut so you don't miss anything. Okay, yeah, again, these are, these are in your notes that I've given you. The next thing is your camera setting. Okay, so everybody, I want you to go ahead. Um, there are some settings that are going to help you, again, get um, take good photographs. So this is what I want you to do, if you want, is go to your settings in your menu. Your Open settings. your settings, okay, and then scroll. Some of you might have to scroll down to find your camera. Okay, it's un it's mine is like my fourth section. So go until you see where it says camera. camera. All right. And click mm -hmm. on it and you're going to see a screen that looks similar to what's on on the screen mm -hmm. here. Okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody with me? So yes. what we're going to talk about is there's a there's a um if you see under composition, you'll see something marked grid. Okay, uh -huh. I want you to go ahead and make that green. Toggle it on, touch it, and put the grid on. Okay, and then also mirror front camera. Okay, and I will tell you what those two things do. Now, the grid is actually when we're going to talk about um, taking, you know, the rule of thirds. That is going to help you set up your photos. So again. You don't have to do a lot of editing after you take them. A mirror front camera, that's what you're going to use when you take selfies. So I don't know how many people are taking selfies. So when you click on that little flip, you're, and you guys like go to touch the right side of your face and all of a sudden it's the left side. This is going to mirror the front of your camera. So when you take selfies, you're, whatever you see in your screen is what you're going to, you know, is what Whatever you see, so when you touch the left side of your face, the left side, is you're going to see exactly what you're touching. That's going to help you a lot with your selfies, okay? And that's the mirror front camera. Um, some of you on uh, 11 and newer, you're going to have something that you're going to turn off the view outside the frame, okay? So you want to go ahead and turn that off. So don't have it green, have it grayed out. No, I'm not Okay, now I don't have that on mine because I have a uh, an older phone. Then when you're going to shoot video, you have different, you know, on the top you see record video and there's different things that you can click on. The best record video is going to be 4K, okay, at 60 frames per second. Now, some of you that might not use your phone probably has a lot of memory and you can record in that video. And that's going to give you the best quality video. So real quick, everybody, I want to I want to um, I want to play this uh, video for you, this YouTube clip for you, and it's going to be just and this is a um, a YouTube site and e um, website called iPhone Photography School. So we're going to go and listen to the seven little known tricks, and this is basically it's going to help you set, um, you know, take great pictures before you go and edit. Okay. So we're going to share this and do, 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 I have, oh, wait a minute, hang on. Um, this is the other one. Okay. You ready, everybody? Yep. If you have an iPhone, you probably take a lot of photos with it and the chance that they don't always work out as you wish they did. Now, here's the good news. If you really understand how your iPhone camera works, you can use it to take photos that are so great that nobody will even believe they were taken with an iPhone. My name is Emil Pokaraklis. I'm the founder of iPhone Photography School. And in this video, I'm going to reveal seven little known tricks for taking incredible iPhone photos that leave everyone speechless. Now, if you want your photos to stand out, your goal should be to show the world to people like they've never seen it before. And the easiest way to do that is by simply changing the angle you shoot from. 
Now, the vast majority of photos are taken from the height of a standing adult, just like this, but that's almost never the best angle to shoot from. For example, if I were to take a photo of this grass right here, and if I do it from a typical angle, it really doesn't look all that great. But what I can do instead is simply get lower to find a more interesting and more unique angle. And now I can take more interesting and more unique photos that look so much better. Now, if I were to take a photo of the skateboard, uh, the easiest thing to do would be to take it while I'm standing. But if I instead get lower and shoot the skateboard from a perspective that we don't normally see, I can take a photo that's so much more interesting. And finally, if I wanted to take a photo of this forest park, instead of shooting it from a regular angle, what I could do instead is get to the top of that bridge. And now I can shoot the same view from a more interesting point of view and thus create a better looking photo of the same scene. The bottom line is that if you want your photos to stand out, you should never just shoot them from the typical angle. Instead, try to find a unique point of view that people don't normally see and your photos will get so much better. So right now you'll see that I've already framed the shot and I'm taking the shot through the front wheel of a bicycle, which makes it more interesting. But right now I haven't set the focus myself. So the auto focus of the iPhone has picked somewhat of an average focus for this photo, but that's not what I want. So for an image like this, it's much better if I set the focus myself. So if I simply tap my finger right here on the foreground, you'll see that this uh, square box appears and the focus is now set on the foreground. But if I'd like to change that, I can do it as well. And for that, I'd have to set focus here on the background and you'll see how different the two resulting images are. The bottom line is this, if you don't set focus yourself, you're leaving your photos up to chance. Sometimes it will work out, at other times it won't, but you will not be in control of the camera of your iPhone. The next technique I'd like to share with you is setting exposure in your iPhone photos. So let me show you how that works. So the photo you're looking at now uh, has some interesting exposure features. For example, the background is much brighter than the arc in the foreground. And because of that, we have to make a creative choice whether we're going to set exposure on the brighter background or on the darker foreground. Now, how do you change exposure on the iPhone? Actually, it's really simple. All you have to do is tap your finger on the screen, and this not only sets focus, but also exposure. So if I tap on the darker foreground, you'll notice that the image got brighter because the iPhone adjusted not just focus, but also exposure. Now, what if I wanted to set focus on a bright background but I wanted to make sure that the foreground was properly exposed. Well, I can do that. And for that, I'd simply tap on the background to set focus there. And then I can swipe my finger up or down the screen to adjust exposure. So I can make sure that the foreground is well exposed and take a photo then. Or alternatively, what I can do is I can make the foreground darker and then take another photo. And this is how you control exposure on the iPhone camera. Now, the next technique I want to share with you is really important, and that is locking focus and exposure. So you already learned how to set focus and exposure in your photos and how to then adjust exposure by swiping your finger across the screen. But what then happens is that if something changes in the scene, or if you just take a photo, the iPhone will automatically revert to automatic focus and exposure. And if you're someone like me who puts a lot of thought in focus and exposure, and then you take a photo, and it immediately resets back to the default. It's just no good. And that's why you want to lock focus and exposure. So in order to lock focus and exposure, all you have to do is tap and hold your finger on the screen, and you hold it down for a couple of seconds until you see the letters A, E, A, F, lock. And now focus is locked. And I can then go ahead and adjust exposure. And now, no matter what happens in the scene, both focus and exposure will remain unchanged. And now I frame the shot I've set focus and exposure, so all I have to do is wait for the perfect picture and then press the shutter. And I can be confident that both exposure and focus will remain unchanged throughout this session. Next, I'd like to show you how to take stunning silhouette photos with your iPhone. Now, silhouettes always look amazing. They're really high in contrast. They're mysterious, and they're actually really easy to capture with your iPhone. You just have to make sure that the light conditions are right. So in order to capture beautiful silhouette photos, first, you need to be in a large open space, such as this beach or next to a body of water or perhaps in a big square in the city. 
then you need to make sure that the sun is low above the horizon. In other words, you want to do this either in the evening before sunset or in the morning shortly after sunrise. And then you have to make sure that the sun is positioned behind your subject. So in other words, the sun has to be right behind the thing that's going to be a silhouette. And when all of these things are in place, you can take beautiful silhouette photos. So the first thing I'm going to do is position myself lower and that way the subject is framed with nothing but the sky behind them. Then what I can do next is carefully frame the shot to make sure the reflection also looks beautiful. And an important trick here is to make sure that the sun is exactly behind your silhouette subject. And when that happens, you can go ahead and take beautiful silhouette photos. And you'll notice that the tiny waves that are really small in real life actually look really interesting as they create these beautiful reflections uh, in the photo. And this is how you can take beautiful silhouette photos with your iPhone. The next technique I'd like to share with you is taking burst mode photos with your iPhone. Now, this is one of my favorite techniques, and unfortunately, very few photographers use it. But it, the way it works is very simple. Whenever you're taking any type of action shots, when you're doing sports photography, or if you're dealing with moving subjects, you can simply tap and hold your finger on the shutter button, and the iPhone will automatically activate the burst mode. So let me show you how that works. So you can see that I've already framed the shot, and as I tap and hold my finger on the shutter button, the iPhone starts taking photos. So if you could jump for a bit. You'll see that the iPhone was continuously taking photos during all of this time. And this way, I can be sure that I'll be able to capture the exact right moment. And I can quickly discard all the other photos and keep the photos I'm really happy about. And these are the type of photos that I wouldn't be able to capture without the burst mode. Now, my students sometimes say that they have nothing to take photos of where they live, but that's just never the case. In fact, there are great photo opportunities all around you, and you just have to learn to recognize them. And the easiest way to do that is to start paying attention to small details that most people never even notice. For example, as I was walking around, I came across this maple leaf, and it's just a regular leaf. But if I take a moment uh, to frame the shot carefully, it actually looks really, really beautiful. Now, let me show you another example. Hundreds of people walk through this park every day, but hardly anyone pays attention to the strong patterns in the wooden walkway right under their feet. But if you take a moment, and if you frame these patterns carefully, you can actually create some really interesting and really unique photos. So remember, there are great photo opportunities all around you and one of the easiest ways to recognize them is to pay attention to the small details that most people would probably ignore. Now, as you can see from the techniques I just shared, the iPhone camera looks really simple on the surface, but as you start digging deeper, it's really not that simple. There are so many hidden... Okay, so hope you um, learned a little bit from that. So um, that um, iPhone, iPhone photography school, that gentleman, um, he, there's so many different little tricks and videos that he has. Now, obviously his whole goal is to try to get people to sign up for his classes, but with everything out on the internet, you do not have to pay for any type of classes um, on how to do your phone, okay? There's so much stuff out there. So the next thing, what we're gonna do is um, how to edit some photos on your iPhone. You're gonna select frames from live photos. So let me go ahead and um, show you this. Can everybody see how it's moving? All right. So what, has everybody ever used live photos or know what this is? So yeah. what I want you to do is if you wanna do this with us, is go ahead wherever you are right now or pull um, and open up your camera. Remember the quick thing, just swipe up or swipe down. Let's open up your camera, okay? All right, and then you're gonna see at the top of your camera, you're gonna see the um, smack dab in the middle. Can everybody see next to where it says HDR? There's like a, like a like a planet with a line through it. Everybody see that? 
So why don't you tap it and it's you're going to see something that's going to see say live. It's going to look exactly like on the screen now. All right, everybody there with me and now go ahead and take a picture of. Uh, let's see the per you can take a picture of your hand or do a selfie of yourself if you want. That's what I like to do everybody. You know, you can flip your camera, take a selfie of yourself. And then, um, and then take a photo. Okay. Now, if you open up your photo. Okay, everybody open up your photo and then. Um, Can you see what they're doing is that you can see all the different photos that you that you took is everybody can see that. So, so if you look at this, so watch the video watch your screen now what i'm sharing you see there's a guy here. If you watch it, it's moving. So you see there's a gentleman here and he slides it over and the guy is gone. Okay. And then you go ahead and you click on that and that's what you want to save. So again, we always do that a lot with selfies. So we can, when we edit, if our eyes aren't open, we can go ahead and find which photo our eyes are open, our mouths are closed, etc. So practice with that. And, um, and that is how the, the live works. Also now there's a, we're still on your photo. So go ahead and um, open up your, go ahead and you can still go ahead, open up um, a photo on your, on your iPhone. We're gonna think bright, okay? So this is what you're looking for. In the edit mode, everybody with me on this, open up a photo on your iPhone, okay? You're gonna go ahead and hit the adjust button on your camera roll, indicated by the dark circle icon. Does everybody see that? No. No? You have to go to edit first, right? Yes, you have to open up a photo and it's gonna be, you're gonna see the circle with the plus and minus on it. Okay, so everybody has a photo pulled up. Click on the one that and then all of a sudden exposure. If you slide, you know, if you slide your finger on the along those little icons on the bottom, it's going to tell you what each one is. You're going to have exposure. You'll have highlights, balance, shadows. Okay, everybody there. Mm -hmm. Perkins, are you good with that? So now so you have your photo and your exposure, okay? So what you wanna do now is take your finger on that little ruler and you can drag your exposure and you'll see how things can brighten if you go to the right and darken if you go to the left, okay? Everybody with me on this? <laughs> That is the exposure. Now, while we're still, the next one that you want to do is the contrast okay. button. So the, okay. Four oh. thirty. Oh, okay. So we're going to follow the same steps, and then under the adjust button, you will find the contrast option, and that's the half-filled circle icon. Everybody, so scroll over to where you see the half circle the half moon, the whole moon with it cut in half. Everybody on with me on that? That is the contrast. And again, pull up, use your same picture and set it. You'll see what it does, okay? That will also make your picture darker, lighter. So basically what we're doing is we're going through these settings on your adjustment. Now the crop on the bottom, 
three, you see a timer and you see the three circles and then you see the crop. Okay. Everybody on me on that? Do you, under, do you everybody know what the crop is? Mrs. Polacek, are you, yes. are you with me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mr. I'm doing Mr. Gray, are you good? Mr. Gray, are you with us? Yeah. Okay. So what they're saying, this is the rule of threes. Okay. When you're going to crop something, a photo, the rule of threes, this is where the grid, when you turn your grid on and you take a picture, you're going to see this grid. And basically you see where they have the, um, the Eiffel Tower is not in the middle. It's on the, on the right hand side. Okay. Those are called PowerPoints. All right, so here, go ahead and look at this cropping the photo of the San Francisco Bridge. So there's your original on the left. We're cropping it. Okay, and then the finished picture is on the right. Okay, so we're not putting the bridge in the center. So they're just trying unique things. When you go ahead and you edit and you crop something, don't necessarily crop and make the people in the center move them over to one side, to the left or to the right. Enhancing colors, again, again, all right? So the next thing you're gonna be looking for on enhancing the colors, okay? You're in the, everybody in the edit mode, the adjust mode. Okay, so the round mm -hmm. dial icon is what you're looking for this one. Okay, it's the rainbow circle one. So everybody, when you see all these dots, go and wait till you see the rainbow. Everybody there, the circle with the rainbow. Picture. What am I doing? Take a picture. Take a picture of something, any picture. Or just pull up a picture. Pull up a picture on your phone, click edit. Okay, and then you're gonna, you're gonna drag. Okay. After I hit edit, I don't see adjust. Pardon? Where's the adjust button? It's the it's the sliding scale underneath it. Oh. You see, like there's like a little roller underneath it, and if you slide it, it's going to change the set. It'll change the image. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this. See the same. Mr. Gray, are you with us on that? No. Okay, so where are you on your phone? What have you done? I hit Hold edit. Up. Okay. I have an iPhone 12, so I don't know if it's different. Um, this is where this does that matter? I don't believe so. That's what I have, and I can't find what you're doing. Right. So what does it look like, Ms. So when you click on edit, you don't have all the um, options on the bottom. Yeah, I, have edit. I have cancel yeah. and four options. All right, what are your four options? There's concentric circles. And there's like, looks like a clock with a dot down at the bottom. Yep. Okay, there's, that's your brightness. And there's three circles. Okay, so try the consent or open up the one that says consent, the first one. Get the clocks. Mm. I, don't, I don't get that. That <laughs> gives me uh, like 12 images of myself. Mm -hmm. the picture. I don't know. Let's go ahead. Mrs. Hernandez, is Mrs. Hernandez on here? Let me just double check. Here. So, um, oh, that's right. So, Mrs. Wood, let me. Um, Let's go ahead and let me look real quickly. Oh, here's edit map. Pardon? Tammy, I, I have an 11 S yes. and I see what he's saying. He's looking down below, uh, Mr. Gray, right? Mm -hmm. So above the ruler where we're going left and right to adjust, there are more icons. So you just, <laughs> just move left and I have the rainbow circle that you're talking about it really just means playing around with it so they're can... having an issue finding it as soon as you click on edit on the photo they right. see those circles right there 
because they have because they're looking at the ruler on the bottom. And I think at least mine, mine's 11S, so the ruler's above, you know, the options are above the ruler, the lines. How does, does that um, make sense, Mr. Gray? Does that make sense? I'd like to know how Peter gets his. I don't different. see a ruler. He, he does that. He has an app. Let me um let me pull up something online so you guys can um so you yeah, guys the, can see that the ruler is faded unless you click onto one of the um the circles the options. Oh, I see it. You do see it. You see the ruler. You have to click on an option. Let me just go ahead and I'm going to show you. Um, did you see them up? Let me go ahead and share this with you. Well, what is the rainbow once you click on that? What is what? That's your, um, so the rainbow. One on my back, one on my screen. I can't How find it. She said, Contest. I don't see Adjust. I don't see Adjust. Where's Adjust? I have to mute some, somebody. Tommy? Tommy? Yeah. We have, um, you have a lot of feedback. Mm -hmm. So, what the, here, let me go ahead and share the screen and go over what the, um, what you're looking at with the rainbow. Again, that's changing your saturation. Yes, saturation. And that's going to mute your colors. Okay, that's going to bring your colors for a calming effect or you can make them more vivid. Okay, so when you go ahead and you use that scale, just make sure you know see the difference on those. I'm going to go apple picking around Westchester. Okay. So again, See the sliding? It's going to make the pit, the uh, the colors more bright. That's saturation is vivid. The vividness. Then you have your highlights. Okay, so these are just so what you want to do is basically so the highlight is going to be. This is your highlight button. Okay. And this is the circle icon with the lines and solid white filling. All right. It's so if you're over, it's um, it's. Do you see where there instead of it's like a, it's the full circle, but it has lines and a solid. Everybody see that? Mm. Mm -hmm. Highlights. Okay. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's not what right. now, there's Everybody, the rainbow. You saw the rainbow? That's your colors. That's your that's your saturation. saturation. Yes. Uh, here's another one. Outhouse orchards in North Salem. Okay. Um, there's also one called shadows. Shadows is going to be an another important one, and that's balancing the intensity to lend more depth and dimension to your photo. Oh, that and again, nice. that's going to, you'll see shadows when you scroll across. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the circle icon with the solid black and line filling. Talking about that one. Everybody have that one? Oh. I don't know which one she's talking about. I thought she you said the same. Have it. Why? Do you see it? This is broken lines. Do you see the? Um, do you see where it says shadows? Yeah. All right. Adjust that and see what it does to your picture. What? Okay. This will add. This will also brighten up some of your photos. Again, mainly what I want you to do is. Go ahead and try all these different circles, and they're all going to have all different exposures. Again, you're going to have highlights, shadows, contrast, brightness, 
and the saturation, those are all your most um, popular things that you want to that you want to use for your photos when you're editing. And Wilkins, there's a lot of them. There is a lot of them, yes. I'm, I'm so just going I'm just going over the most important huh. ones. All yep. the other ones that you're doing have great. Warmth, pardon? You're doing great. Warmth and tint and all of that. Um, Okay, so the next we're going to do is uh, oops, I'm just going to take off the All right, so let me go on to the next screen. Applying the filters. Now, this is something that uh, you guys will see. This is what you want to do is wait to the end. This is that one in the middle that has the three circles. Okay, everybody, wherever you, on the bottom, the three circles. Now, if you tap on it, you're going to see all the different effects. Oh, yeah, yeah, three circles. Vivid, warm, dramatic. Think everybody sliding it over and seeing the difference. Look at the look at your screen. Oh, well, that's cute. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of people do is they pick up a popular filter and then they kind of you know they brand the way they take photos you know so everything that they use and they post on instagram and facebook has everything looks the same you know so i always like um mine is vivid i like vivid cool and then when you like viv when you like something go ahead and adjust it so you can find how to you know basically it's branding your instagram account and um and you know when you when you're done and you want it if you click done okay and then again you can always take it back to an original if you want your edits are not um you can always revert your edits so don't worry about that so real quick i want to go over the best editing tools okay so this, again, this we're going pretty fast, but the main thing is um, get, a, get, a, get a photo taken as best as you can, go inside and try to adjust it using the iPhone tools. And then now if you wanna go ahead and um, get even more depth, change the colors of the background or the clouds or make the, um, make the landscaping or the, the sunset pink instead of orange, you know, you can do all of this. So Snapseed is something that I have and you can use it on your iPhone or um, on your Android. And it's just, it's a free app. So you, this is the, uh, the logo, it's the picture of the leaf. Um, again, when you're gonna, you give it all the permissions and I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, show you a quick little video on making it to eat now on the snapseed app okay so let's go ahead and okay. snapseed is the best free mobile photo okay. editing apps you can use it to transform photos like this into photos like this or something like this, into something like this. Just a few edits make this photo much more vibrant. I photographed and edited all of these pictures entirely with my mobile phone and Snapseed. One of the reasons Snapseed is great is because it's really easy to use, but nonetheless, beginners do need a bit of help. And when I started out, I couldn't find one complete tutorial on YouTube. So here's mine. We'll begin by going through all of the basic editing features one by one. Then we'll look at two of the more powerful editing features, the selective and brush tools. Finally, we'll go through and edit together, and I'll give you some general advice to improve your editing. There are timestamps in the description if you want to skip to a particular section. So let's begin. First of all, once you've installed Snapseed, you should go to settings and set format and quality to JPEG 100% to make the... Now you don't have to worry about everything here. I just wanted to, um, I'll skip around so you can see some of the things, um, how he changes the pictures. So there actually is, um, 
talk about the sky. This one is pretty good. All right. He's going to edit this one. The photo, just so. Two other options which are cool, but which I don't recommend for serious editing, are the perspective and expand tools. Perspective allows you to change, well, the perspective, like so. Expand will use AI to guess at what would be outside the frame of the photo. It's pretty cool, but it doesn't always do a perfect job. Another useful tool, which you can use to remove small objects from your image, is the healing tool. If I wanted to remove this seagull from the image, I would go to Tools, Healing, Zoom In, and remove it from the image. You can also use the healing tool to remove those weird little blue dots that you get when you point your camera at the sun, and if there are any aeroplane trails, for example, in the sky, you can remove those too. Don't try to remove objects that are too large or hold people from the image, or you'll leave a noticeable smudge behind. Once you've finished your cropping, rotating, and healing, if your photo needed any, we can proceed to make our adjustments. Let's start with the Tune Image tool. As always with Snapseed, scroll up and down to see the different options available to you. The first option is Brightness. Drag your finger to the right to increase the overall brightness of the image. Drag to the left to decrease it. Next up is Contrast, which essentially accentuates the difference between the bright and dark. So he goes over all of these settings, and these are exactly the same settings that you can do on your iPhone, so you'll understand what the brightness, the contrast, um, can do. So again, some people will bypass the iPhone and then just pull up on an editing app like Snapseed. So again, while he goes through this, you'll see exactly what um, those basic editing tools do. Dark areas of your photo. So you see if we increase contrast, the bright areas get brighter while the dark areas get darker. Whereas if we decrease contrast, there's very little difference between the bright and dark areas. Here's a photo which really benefits from having a higher contrast, because it makes the brighter foreground subject stand out in comparison to the darker background. The third option is saturation. This makes the colours in your image more intense and vivid. Beginners tend to go overboard with this feature. Although a little bit more saturation is usually a good thing, keep those edits moderate. If you decrease saturation, it will remove the colour from your image until it's black and white. The next option is Ambience. This one's a little hard to explain, but essentially it makes the foreground brighter and pop more in contrast to the background. You can see here with this photo that it looks pretty good, but don't push it too far. As you can see here with the clouds and the sky, it looks a bit dark and grainy. The next option is Highlights. This affects the bright areas of your photo. Increase to make these bright areas even brighter, decrease to make them darker. The shadows option does the same thing, but for the dark areas. Drag to the right to make those dark shadowed areas brighter, drag to the left to make them even darker. The final option is warmth. Drag to the right to add a warm orange colour to your image, and drag to the left to add a cool blue colour to your image. It can look nice in moderation, and the temperature tool that we'll look at in a second is also an effective way to do this. Next up, we have the Details tool. This allows you to sharpen the small details in your image. Take, for example, this photo that I took at Alhambra. You can see how the patterns have been sharpened and accentuated. On other photos, however, you'll want to use this far more moderately. You can see here, for example, how it hasn't really done wonders for the sky. If you scroll down, there's another option called Sharpening, but to be honest, it often doesn't look very good and I'd recommend you just to stick with the structure slider. The next option is called White Balance, which allows you to adjust the colour of your image. It has two options, Temperature and Tint. If you drag the Temperature bar to the right, you'll get a more orange image. If you drag it to the left, it'll become a more cool blue image. Scrolling down to Tint, if you drag it to the right, it'll bring out the purple, the magenta tones in the image. If you drag it to the left, it'll bring out the greens. With this photo, for example, I can go to Tint and just drag it slightly to the right to give the sky a nice pink hue. Yeah. Now there's a bunch of tools like HDRscape, Glamour Glow, etc, which are essentially just preset filters. 
You can play around with them if you like, but hopefully by the end of this tutorial you'll be able to edit photos for yourself anyway. And to be honest, these preset filters can leave your photo looking a bit tacky. I've especially seen people abusing the HDRscape tool. Yikes. The Tonal Contrast tool can have some good results. Essentially, it accentuates the contrast between the high, medium and low tones of your image, although sometimes it can end up looking a bit artificial. Play around with it and see if it works for the image that you're editing. There's a Oh, I also, um, I know, let me just see what time it is. All right, so I want to stop um, this video again because I want to show you what um, some people, what you can do. So I'm going to stop, I'm going to do a new share. And um, let's see, I want you all to see this. This was, I think this was very cool. Um, Human beings are natural storytellers. The purpose of storytelling is to connect. Okay, this is super cool, everybody. Hi everyone, Rad Drew here. Hey, I want to do a really short, quick tutorial tonight on how to colorize an item in an image um, using Snapseed's masking. Um, so it's going to be really short and sweet. So I'm going to go out here, open up Snapseed. I'm going to click open at the top here, and I'm going to go down to the device. And I'm going to scroll down here to where I have a Snapseed folder, and I'm going to grab this image right here. It's a car I shot in Cuba last year. And I wasn't doing a very good job of cropping in the camera when I took this, uh, composing in the camera. So I need, I need to do a pretty significant crop on this. So we'll use it, and then we're going to go down to our tools at the bottom. I'm going to go to the crop tool, and I'm going to choose a 16-9, kind of a panoramic crop. And I'm going to come over here and bring that in a little bit. I got a, some kind of blue spot over there I want to get rid of. And I want to crop that line out of the bottom. And I'm going to bring this in, maybe something like that. I like where that, um, let's see. Yeah, something like that. Let's take a look at that. Again, that looks pretty good. Order. I've got this little goober over here on the side. I don't know what that is. Let's go ahead and use our... Um, healing brush to take this little spot over here out if we can i think it'll probably come out pretty easily and you see how he's taking well, that not out. as easy as i thought is it there we go that took care of it all right so now um double tap on that and bring it back so that looks pretty good i like the position of the car in the frame we got rid of the blue over there on the left and we've got our people kind of there uh, in the background Okay, so now I'm going to go back um, to my tools and I'm going to run through my, my standard workflow that I use on a lot of things. I'm going to go to Tune Image. I'm going to scroll down here to Ambiance. I'm going to bring the ambiance all the way up to 100 and kind of evaluate the image. Uh, there's, there's before and there's after. I'm going to go ahead and maybe drop that a little bit. And then I'm going to go down to my highlights. I want to drop the highlights just a little and look at that roof of that car there's before and there's after that's what i'm looking for and then i'm going to go down here to shadows and i'm going to drop the shadows a little bit to add a little drama there around the car kind of darken some things and and kind of really pop the car out warmth um it's pretty warm already i may bring it up just a just a couple points there there's our before and there's after so i'm going to click the check mark down below to commit to those changes and the next thing will be to go up here to details. And I want to bring up the um, structure and the sharpening in here. So I'm going to zoom in so I can kind of watch what's going on. But I usually find that if I get to about 20 or 21, that's usually pretty good. And go down to sharpening. Bring it up there. It's about the same. There's before and there's after. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go to tools. And I'm going to go down and choose black and white. And just to be quick here, I'm going to go and look at these presets that are here and see if there's one that really kind of floats my boat as I look at these. Um, so I don't have to do a lot of, um, well, that one's close. Let's drop the brightness down a little bit. That looks pretty good. I kind of like that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark. So now we have an all black and white image, but I want that car to be red. So to do that, I'm going to go up to the stacks up on the right with the button with the little arrow over it. I'm going to tap on that. I'm going to tap on View Edits. 
And over here on the right, here are our, our layers of uh, adjustments that we've done. We've got a crop adjustment. We did that healing to take that stuff out on the edge, some tune, image, some details, and black and white. So what I want to mask is the black and white. I'm going to tap on black and white, and I'm going to hit the brush in the center. That's our masking tool. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this. So now, to make this quick, down at the bottom, there's a little button right next to the X on the lower left. I'm going to tap that, and notice it it's colorized the whole image. Um, what that's doing is it's telling Snapseed, apply the black and white to every part of the image. Well, what I want to do now is go in here and erase. I want to go in here and erase the um, the, the uh, instructions here for the car. So I'm going to take my stylus today. I don't usually use one, but I've got one right now. For this kind of stuff, it's kind of good to to get in those tight areas. And you can you know you can expand as much as you can, but a lot of moving around here. Um, going in here, trying to get all these little areas that are red in here. And I'm just painting away that top layer of color. Um, now you notice back here I kind of got out of the lines a little bit and I got over there on the uh, on the background. So to fix that I'm going to go down to the where it says black and white zero. I'm going to tap the arrow on the right and take it up to a hundred. I'm going to show you what it looks like at the end because I think you all have seen these cool pictures about over like here on the arrow down below where it says black and white. I'm going to tap that down to zero again. And now I'm going to wipe away that layer to let the color come through here. And then these guys over here, I'm going to colorize or, you know, wipe that away from them too. See what, now oh, there's a red shirt, some blue pants. That's look, that'll look good. Go ahead and kind of get that. Again, I'm zooming in as much as I can. There's a oh, there's a limit to how far you can zoom with this. Sometimes I wish you could go a little further, but it's um, kind of hard sometimes. I'm and again I'm using the stylus. You can go a little slower when you're doing your stuff, but for what I'm doing here, I'm going pretty quick. And again, I got out of the line, so I'm going to take this up to 100, and I'm going to come over here and. Kind of get that back, because otherwise that yellow from the wall is going to show through. Okay, so there's our image, and commit to it. And look at that. Oh, that's pretty cool. We've got a black and white image with the red car popping out of it, and then we've got these characters over here in color. And it's just a, just a fun way to do this. And you can do this masking with any of the adjustments that you do in Snapseed. It doesn't have to be just a colorization like this. So um, it applies. So that is, so again, there's so many things out there what we can um, do. The um, But I use Snapseed and it is so much fun. And again, there's so many different things that you can do with your photos. So best thing to do is to download it um, off the, on the, you know, go to your app store and download it and start playing with it and um, see what you can do. Again, that's really what we need to do. The other app that we have is the VSCO. Now, probably if you all have grandkids or teenagers, um, they're probably using this VSCO um, photo and video editor. Now, when they compare the two, people think the VSCO um, is the best one. But a lot of people that have Instagram accounts and a lot of influencers and things that like that use this VSCO. Basically, it has a ton of different filters and it'll memorize like how you want your pictures to look. Now, it also it is free. However, if you want to have a membership, it's going to cost you $19.99 a year. OK, but it has a bunch of different filters. Um, I, for me, being a tech savvy person, and um, I thought the, um, you have to, the VSCO, I didn't think it was as user friendly, I guess, because I'm used to the snap snead, but um, let's, I'm not sure, I forgot how long, if this video is long, but this will give you an overview of um, the VSCO. So let's go ahead and um, 
we're going to go ahead and actually, I don't think it, oh, here it is. Um, Hi, this is Emil from iPhonePhotographySchool.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the photo library and the built-in uh, editing using presets in VSCO Cam. Now the first thing you'll probably see when you open up VSCO Cam is the library which has all the photos that you've taken so far with v VSCO or you also can add your own photos using the plus button over here. So if you select that you can see all the other photos that you've taken such as and you can go through all the different folders that you have on your iPhone if you select this arrow on the top right corner and then from there you can just add any photos you want so let me just tap on a few so that I can show you what I mean okay so once I've selected the photos I want to add uh, I just tap on this check mark at the bottom right and these photos are imported into VSCO okay so that's done and now we have all these photos into VSCO as well now if you scroll all the way to the top you'll see that at the top left hand side you have this circle if you tap on that you can choose between displaying all images which I have now or you can display just the flagged images which are essentially your favorites that you have put a flag on or your edited photos which are photos that you've done some editing with inside VSCO well, for now I'll just display all images because that's what I want to see now on the top right hand side you see this grid of squares and if you tap on that you can change how big the thumbnails are and medium is probably a nicer option though you can really use whichever you prefer okay uh, in VSCO cam you can always select multiple photos not just one and it's really easy to do so so all you have to do is just tap on an image and it gets selected then you tap on some more and they get selected too or if you tap again as I'm doing now then you deselect one image so you can just select as many images as you want and once they're selected uh, you have a few options of what you can do you can make them all favorites using this favorite flag at the bottom as I did now or if you select a few images you can you can share them all using the share icon at the bottom which then brings up the sharing options or just the option to save your images to camera roll if you don't want that you press X uh, or you can trash images using the trash can but I'm not gonna do that now well and if you've selected a lot of images but you don't want to do anything with them you just tap the X at the bottom left hand corner okay if you want to open any of these images for full screen view you just double tap so that's what I did now and here you can swipe left and right to move between the images. Uh, if, you want to if you want to see more controls, you tap on the image again, or tap again to hide. At the top left-hand corner, you see this icon, which looks like pie chart, or actually a bar chart. So if you tap on that, you get to see different statistics about the image, like where it was taken on a map, or you get to see the aperture, uh, ISO values, flash when it was taken, and so on. So to get back you tap on that again. Here again you have the option to, to tap on X and if you do that at the bottom left hand corner and if you do that you just get out of this image view. So let's get back in. You, you have the option to flag an individual photo or remove the flag. You have editing which is these brushes in the middle. You have the option to share an image and if you just select one image you get more sharing options or you can delete an image. Well, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll try to show you how to delete, uh, how to edit this image using the built-in presets inside VSCO Cam. So I'll tap on the Edit, which is the paintbrush, and what happens now is that VSCO Cam automatically op opens this window with a bunch of presets at the bottom. You can swipe through them and select any of the presets just to see how the image is going to look like once the effects are applied. There are a lot of really interesting image presets. Some of them work better than others. Some work for some images, but not for others. So you really have to just you know play around, see what you have in here, until you find something that you think works well for this image. And I think I'm going to go for SC3 here. Uh, and what you can also do is you can double tap on the effect. And that, and that brings up this menu, where you can also adjust how strong the effect is. If you go all the way down to 0, then no effect is applied. Or if you go to 12, it's at the highest strength. 
But I think for this image, something like 10 is what I'm looking for. And so if I'm happy with the new look, I just tap on the check mark at the bottom right. And I'm done. And in order to save changes and go to the next step. I so as you see, so let me just explain the VSEO. So I guess uh, depending on what you want to do to your photos, I like to manipulate all my photos and create all the different effects. But the VSEO, it has all those different filters, so you can just apply them each time and see um, and see if you like your photo with that effect. So in simplicity, that's pretty simple. You just click on the different um, filters, and then you can adjust those. So that what that is what the free um, part of the VSEO is is just a whole bunch of different filters and enhancements that you can do with it. So I don't want to, um, um, again, it still has the same type of cropping tools. Okay. And it also has all the different exposures that we're used to. Do you see that? So in the end, you know, try both of them. You can download them and see which ones, you know, see which ones you like. So, um, all right, now for everybody on here, all of these links, let me just show you what I did um, on the on the PowerPoint. So, so here are, there's some, these are some useful links. If you want to um, try these out on your own, you have the iPhone photography school, you also have the, you know, have some photography tips. And um, again, use this, um, use the, the presentation that I sent to you guys and um, explore. And, uh, you know, maybe what you can do is email me some of your photos that you've edited. Um, you know, you know, send them to, you know, send them to us for your Glen Eagles you know, every Sunday or something, Saturday, we release the photos that are taken. You can send them out there. So before, I'm just going to stop the recording.